I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. Mmm. -hmm. I also checked out Kazanoo. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Great, thanks. Now, are you gonna tell me what happened yesterday with Malia Getty, or <laughs> is it just too embarrassing? Hmm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. Are the star at tonight? Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Nyatt family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. Huh. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Oh, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty, as should every woman on this planet. I just... Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. Times Pick of Hune. Dated June 20, 1993. Gabriel scans over an uninteresting front page. Under the cultural events section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University. Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course before it's too late. Lighten up. Somewhere there's a New Orleans Somewhere there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. Hello? Hello? I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. <laughs> Castro, be quiet! Who is this? I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Agent Critter's Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you have a Madame Kazonu as a client? Madame Kazonu? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Uh, yes. But I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggy? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks.
Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your pal mostly called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning, and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. Do you have more messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. I took down his number. If you change your mind and want to give him a call back, just ask me for it. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure. I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Here's that phone number. Thanks. The number written on the note is four nine zero nine three two four three 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 three. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht? I'm looking for Wolfgang Ritter. Ja, einen Moment. Ja, ist es Gabriel on the phone? This is Gabriel Knight. Why are you calling me, Mr. Ritter? I have been having premonitions of great danger for you, Gabriel. You must leave New Orleans this very day. What the hell are you talking about? It is hard to explain on the phone. I have had sensitive uh, feelings about you. It took me a long time to have you tracked down. I had a sense that Heinz had a grandson, but until these dreams started, I did not know if I should contact you. You say you're related to my grandfather? Yes. Heinz was my brother. There is much about the family that you should know, Gabriel. Come to Schloss Ritter in Rittersberg, West Germany. It is our family home. I will tell you everything when you come. You must come immediately. You are in great danger there. Look, I appreciate the family spirit and all, but frankly I don't know you from Adam, and I'm not going to fly off to Germany, even if I could afford it. Gabriel, please, if you won't listen, at least let me send you something. It is a journal from one of your ancestors. Promise me you will read it. Well, I'm pretty busy. Please, Gabriel, you are the last of our line. I am too old to carry on. You are our last hope. Please, for your family, read the journal. All right, I'll look at it. Good. Now be careful and come to me as soon as you can. Goodbye. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Good luck. The artist is an able draftsman. How's it going today? What? Oh, it's only you. 
Man, I have been jumpy all day. That, that pattern of yours really freaked me out for some reason. There's just something creepy. You finished it? Yeah, and you're welcome to it. Here. Wow, this is great. Uh-huh. Just don't, like, blow up the planet with it or something, okay? I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, forget it. I'm probably just being stupid. Do your thing with it, and good luck. Come on, boys. Hoopla. Not a bad idea. <whistles> Madame Lorelei winks knowingly at Gabriel and twitches her hip. Yep. She wants me. The veil belongs to the fortune teller. It's covered with shiny, iridescent sequins. The man... ...does not... Gabriel examines the veil with a magnifying glass. That sequin looks a little strange. Why, it's a snake scale. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil. Gabriel magnifies the scale from the fortune teller. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. I think this veil belongs to you. Huh, my veil. I'm always losing those things. You have no idea. Well, darling, you're such a sweetie to return a lady's delicates and so handsome as well. Will I? And since you have such a clear interest in fortune-telling, let me see your hands. 
They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Hmm, strong. Yes, no. yet so delicate and um, flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel knowingly. She is a dangerous one. Dark and beautiful. Ah, I see the road of your life, Falcon. And very soon. <laughs> the blood drains from Madame Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? They're all fortunes. Oh God! Beware! Beware! What is it about me lately? I can't resist black. Gabriel doesn't want to take that from the ready room. Gabriel cannot see him. Not to Gabriel. Long ceremonial robes hang in the closet. The closet shelves are stacked with the art. In other words, the closet shelves are stacked with the odds in, in other words, nothing Gabriel is familiar with. There's a box of white cream. Well, you never know when a priest's collar will come in handy. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. for letting me borrow it. Yeah? Well, you borrow it again in your history. <sighs> now, about today. Glad you made it. It'll give you a feel for how I am in action. You know, handling suspects, that sort of thing. I'm sure it'll be invigorating. Uh, who is this guy, anyway? 
calls himself Crash. He's been an informant for us before, mostly helping us bust small-time pimps and dealers trying to break into the territory. Well, he's been staying invisible during these murders, but we picked him up this morning to Jackson Square. Pushing coke? He knows something. Call it Detective's Instinct. Detective's Instinct. <laughs> Got it. All right, Crash. I want to hear about these murders. You been present at the so-called voodoo ritual? I don't know nothing. I told you. Oh, come on now, you can tell me. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? Look, look I, I can't say nothing. You gotta let me go, man. Now you relax. No one knows you're here. The man who picked you up were plain clothesmen. Plain clothes, like you could fool them. <laughs> They know I'm here. They've got ears all over the city. They know everything. Now who are they, Crash? Are they the ones doing the murders? Let me go! If you're so worried about being detained, start talking. Now you tell me what I want to hear, and maybe I can get you in the witness protection program. But you have to earn it. Witness protection? Are you crazy? Don't make me laugh. Jesus, just let me out of here. Now, oh, come on. Who's behind these murders, Crash? Why are the victims all members of the underworld? By now they know I'm here. I mean, it's, it's different when I'm supposed to come here. Well, if I can send a message, tell him I didn't say nothing. Crash, he's freaking useless. Take him back to detaining, would you, Tony? I tell you, times like this, I'd kill for true serve and damn the civil rights. Can I quote you on that? Huh? Hell no. Damn! We only keep him for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have to let him go. Sorry it wasn't more exciting. Uh, for the book, I mean. Maybe you can punch it up some. You know, what do they call that? Fiction, that's it. It certainly is. I'll see what I can do. Can I? You're... What's the state of... It sure as hell ain't going well. There's a lot of breaks being applied in different areas of the investigation. We're getting some real info on the victims now, and they're not exactly upstanding citizens. And I was hoping to get more out of Crash, but he's scared shitless. We'll have to let him go tomorrow morning. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? You mean like those Halloween masks they sometimes use in robberies? I don't think so. More like real animals. Never ran across anything like that. I'm gonna hit the road. Have a good one. It looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa. But the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Voodoo and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. 
At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. The one tribe would conquer another, and the loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's loa pantheon. In this way, many of the voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices, animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the voodoo loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of voodoo. <sighs> Fascinating guy. In voodoo, the spirits are called the loa. During a voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the loa. And this is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse, and the loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa loa include Dambala, the great serpent god, Ezruli, the mistress of love, Papa Nebo, or Gede, the Lord of Death. Agwe, the Spirit of Water. Legba, Spirit of the Crossroads. And the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the Lord of Destruction. Ugh. Oh, I gotta get more sleep at night. A uh, tribe-specific loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called haunfors. Their priests, hangun or bokors. Their priestesses, mama loa. In a voodoo haunfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a poto mitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a vebe, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's vebe is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special law. During ritual conclaves, initiates dance under the supervision of a bokor and a mamaloa, or head priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now, though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or asson, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The ritual whip, or fwet kash. And the ritual coffin, or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the mamaloa for specific magical rituals. The mamaloa is the most powerful figure in any voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the bokor knows his power is limited. The Mama Loa is the supreme woman. She, butterflies, fireflies. Firelight. No, that is. Gabriel? Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel! Get in! Man, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide! 
No, no, let me out, help! Young man, the lecture is over. Oh my god, sorry. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. The artist's reconstruction of the voodoo murders pattern looks accurate to Gabriel. Something about it seems vaguely familiar and creepy. And if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. Do you have any idea what Cabri Sans Corps means? Cabri Sans Corps? Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French. And literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in voodoo are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. Tell me about Beves. If you'd taken notes during my lecture, you wouldn't have to ask. What can you tell me about voodoo? You already sat through my lecture on the subject, Mr. Knight. Perhaps next time you could stay awake and learn something. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I've read about them in the papers. I must admit to some interest. But according to the newspapers, the voodoo aspect is faked, so I haven't really pursued it. You know how Americans, and especially Hollywood, treats voodoo. I'm sure there are many so-called practitioners out there that have no idea what they're doing or the power they're playing with. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm not a zoologist, Mr. Knight, but I know all I care to about reptiles. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of voodoo somewhat interesting from a surely intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true voodoo practices. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's uh, very rare. Most voodoo practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible, if that's the gods' demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Papa Nivo. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. Well, 
interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating baby. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. Each of the symbols in the Veve represents something, a loa, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this Veve is authentic, then? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, uh, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this if you don't mind. Gabriel Dot Gabriel Dot Okay, thanks. Good day, Mr. Knight. This is private. This is the last. The things I do for my art. Father McLaughlin to see you. Father McLaughlin, you say? Hmm. You must be new in the parish. I'm so pleased to meet you, Father. Do come in. Thank you, my child. Please be seated, Father. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, my child? Of course not, mon père. Do you have any idea what Cabri Sans Car means? <laughs> Mais oui, I know. I bet you do not, Farah, n'est-ce pas? It means goat without horns. Ah, Father, you surprise me. You do know what it means. You know what they mean by goat without horns, don't you? A human being? That's right. Slit your throat, cut out your heart. Pure evil murder. Do you know anything about human sacrifice here in New Orleans? Ah, well, my great-grandmother could tell stories. She saw it. People say that sort of thing wasn't done in New Orleans, but the real voodoo queens did it. Oh, yes. Who were the real voodoo queens? Uh, well, 
My great grandmother told me that Lavo was just a front, a flamboyant decoy. She distracted authorities from the real voodoo queen of Norians. It's been the same one for almost 200 years. She's head of a secret voodoo on four. That's what they call the temples, you know. It's so secret, most of the voodoo people in this city don't even know about it. The real voodoo queen controlled Lavo, gave her a little bit of power, and used her like a puppet. Tell me more about this secret voodoo hound fool. Well, I've never seen it. I wouldn't go near it if you paid me. But it's here in Orleans, I guarantee it. I hear the drums at night, oh yes. That's why I am so ill. I tell you, those drums. But we shouldn't talk about it. They'll hear us. It's the devil's work that happens there. I can tell you. I'll show you something. Something secret. You mustn't tell anyone, father. I swear on my collar. Here it is, mon père. A true object of evil if there ever was one. It radiates something, all right. It belonged to my great-grandmother. She told my mother that it was a token to gain entrance to the real voodoo ceremonies. You don't say. To tell you the truth, I always felt nervous about having it in the house. You know, evil influence and all. Oh, I can see how you would, yes. And yet, I could never part with it. It's been in the family for generations. Would you bless it for me, father? I feel strange asking such a thing of you, but surely you understand. Bless this bracelet of a snake. Even though its vibes aren't great, let it do nobody harm when they wear it on their arm. Voodoo spirits, go away. Don't come back another day. And now, let us pray. Gabriel has a thought about the clay. Bless, oh bless, this circlet of silver. Take the curse, oh take it. Wilbur. A lovely blessing, mon père. Yes, I think it made a lasting impression. Here you go. Ah, I feel so much better now. Well, madame, I must be gone. Of course, father. I know how busy you must be then. I'm not going back on the street looking like this. My precious boy, how wonderful of you to stop by. Can't stay away from you, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. It's a clay mold of Madame Kazunu's snake bracelet. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Ritter? As I said, your granddad's surname was originally Ritter. I never learned much about his family, but from things he said, I always thought he had a brother back in Germany. I don't know if Wolfgang Ritter is related to your granddad or not. Do you know any? I don't know what else to.
Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Hi. Uh-huh. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Do you know anything about animal masks? Like the ones in the voodoo rituals they do for the tourists? Right. I used to sell a few as souvenirs. The only one left is Willie Jr. over there. The old crocodile. Well, he's sort of a mascot now, him. About Willie Jr., would you be willing to let him go? Hmm, maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks? You've got to be kidding. Me and Willie Jr. are very close, Norm. I could part with him for less. there. Made it back, though. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. That doesn't... Hey, kids. Bruno, how nice. Gee, a customer. Of yours, hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Stay out of this, Grace. Ooh, you're serious. You'll let me have it? Yeah, I'll let you have it, all right. How much for the painting? Hmm, well, I could give you a hundred. That's all I can let go at the moment, you know. My fares are so tied up. Gabriel, a hundred dollars for your father's painting? Grace, let me deal with this. Fine, it's yours. Gabriel! Here! Here's the hundred! You better take good care of this, Bruno. This is not just another of your hip art pieces, you know. Really? Well, I fully intend to make the most of its display, though not for your sake, I'm sure. At least in my shop, there'll be a chance of someone actually seeing it. I can't believe I actually got it! Just wait until I show see it. Don't believe you! It, it's just a painting, Grace. There are things I have to do. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Have fun. Hi. Uh-huh. Can I add... Whatever, man.
Are you still interested in selling that crocodile mask? Or you show me a hundred dollars and the mask is yours. I have a hundred dollars. You still want to sell that crocodile mask? That's a hundred dollars. Sure enough. The mask, it's yours, sir. Here you go. Carefully don't bite you now. Yeah, thanks. Don't you go forgetting your lagniap? A free bottle of master gambling oil. The sign said I could get Lady Luck oil instead. Well, I wasn't thinking a man as young as you would be needing that kind of remedy. But if you having problems with your... Oh, that's all right. Believe me, I don't need it. I'll just stick with this. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> of course, it ain't none of my business if you do need it. I don't need it. Of course you don't. Could I ask you a few questions? Sure. I'm not too busy at the moment. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? This crowd? The ones you see are mostly regulars. That guy and girl in the corner come here a lot. When they're not fighting, they're all over each other. In other words, they're in love. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? See those old guys at the chess table? That's Sam and Marcus. They played every day for 20 years. Sam, the one with the purple jacket, he's lost every one of those games. It's not that he's a bad player. I've seen him beat guys twice as good as Marcus. But Marcus has Sam so psyched out, he loses his nerve every time. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? <laughs> I don't believe in it myself. I invented a drink once called La Vaux's Tomb. But it wasn't very popular. Some people do believe, though. Even some of our regulars here at Napoleon House. That guy Sam, the chess player? Oh, he's really into voodoo. He's always talking about spells and gree gree and stuff. Really? Right. Thanks. So what has Sam told you about voodoo? Well, about 50 years ago, Sam was too shy to talk to this pretty girl he was in love with. He went to a voodooine and had her make him a love charm. It was a little pouch that he had to bury under the girl's front porch. Well, he buried the pouch, and the next day, he went up and talked to the girl. And, sure enough, she didn't reject him. Now she's his wife. <laughs> Poor guy. Got a second, Sam? It's about your game. I don't have a game. That's my problem. Don't you touch those chess pieces while I'm gone, you bastard. I ain't never needed a cheat yet, you loser.
Thought you might be interested in this gambling oil. Let me see that. Master gambling oil. What's it for? This is a powerful voodoo oil. Ah, go on. Really? Don't you ever wonder why Marcus wins every time? Marcus? Using voodoo? That old bastard. Pitiful, isn't it? Uh, let me see that bottle. Oh, this looks authentic. Oh, it is. If I could really beat that bastard. Stonewall, give me a Pim's cup, would you? Coming up, Sam. How much you think I'd have put in here? Careful. You don't want to overdo it. Too much luck can be dangerous. Ha! There's no such thing as too much. Now stand back. Come on already. I'm ready to chat me. We'll see about that, Mr. Schmuddy Big Mouth. Checkmate! <laughs> Checkmate, you bastard! Son of a bitch! Twenty years I've been waiting to say that! Checkmate, checkmate, checkmate! <laughs> you are the biggest butthead Sam Singleton that I ever met! Checkmate! You! You! You can just put this chips board where the sun don't shine! Hallelujah! I did it! Yippee! Nice game. Nice game. Hell, I was brilliant! Of course, I gotta give some of the credit to that oil of yours. You've been losing to that guy for 20 years. If you ever need a favor, you come to Sam, you hear? Will do. Could you do anything with this? What is this? A clay mold? Hmm. Well, I am a jeweler, you know. And I owe you one. Would you like me to cast this for you? Hmm. If you can. You got it, pal. Actually, it'll be a pleasure to get my tools out first time in years. I've been too busy playing that goddamn game. I'll have the bracelet tomorrow. Meet me here. Great, thanks. Malia. Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. I noticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else. Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for. I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. 
I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. This isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look, I know you've got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I have a little bookshop, St. George's, on Bourbon. I know. See? I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come by tonight, please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it! It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Excuse me, I'm going inside. Oh, uh, excuse me, I'm afraid St. George's is closed for the day. I'm not a customer. I'm here to see the owner. Why don't you just leave your name and number with me, and I'll tell him you stopped by. Listen, if Gabriel is here, he'll want to see me. Is he here? Really couldn't say for certain, but in the morning... Gracie, say goodnight. Ugh. You came. I didn't think you would. I didn't think I would, either. Your eyes. Hmm. Oh, I could show you around a little. Yeah, it's not much, but... Please, don't. I couldn't focus on much of anything right now. Yeah, I know. God, what is it about you? Just shut up and kiss me.